What would you do if somebody paid you to quit your job and be unemployed? What's up everybody, I am Jasprit Singh and welcome to The Minority Mindset. Jamie Black Lewis is an entrepreneur who started two successful spas in Washington. Well, when this great lockdown started, she was forced to shut down her spas and now she didn't have any money coming in to pay her 35 employees, so she eventually had to stop paying them. That's when the government created the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, which is the small business savior, which was supposed to lend money to small businesses businesses, that way they have money to pay their employees. Jamie being the entrepreneur she is wanted to save her business and her employees, so she applied for the loan. A little while later she got the money and then she had a virtual team meeting with all her employees to tell them the good news, they're gonna start getting paid again. But they weren't very happy. Actually, according to her, it was quote, a firestorm of hatred. Turns out these employees would have made more money if the company went under and they got fired and they filed for unemployment than if the company stayed in business. It is a strange time for a shore, which is why in this video, I want to talk about if we're punishing the good and rewarding the bad and what this effect has to our economy. So make sure you watch this video until the end because there's a cost to all these things that we're doing and you want to make sure you come out of this on the winning side. But before we get into that, hit that thumbs up button below because if you don't, then YouTube doesn't share our video with anybody else. Subscribe to the Minority Mindset YouTube channel, that way you don't miss our new financial education videos every single week. And Hit that little notification bell too, because if you don't, YouTube doesn't let you know when our new videos are released. In an ideal world, you would be compensated in proportion with the amount of value that you create. The people that work hard and create a lot of value would be rewarded more with more money. And the people that are lazy and aren't creating value wouldn't. Pretty obvious. Now, obviously, the system isn't always equally fair. Some people will have to work harder than others, and some people will have less opportunities than others. But if you are born in a developed country, and you are healthy, and you have the means to watch and understand this video, you're blessed, and you can become successful no matter what anyone else says. Now, if you find a big problem, like not getting enough guac from Chipotle, and you come up with a solution for this problem, and people are willing to pay you for your solution, you should be rewarded for finding the solution to this problem, you know, by making more money. If you're like me, and you just want to eat the guac, then you shouldn't be rewarded for any of this value creation, because, well, I didn't create any value, I just ate it. Mm, guac. But what happens when the people eating the guac get rewarded more than the people making the guac? Well, that's exactly what's happening right now, except just not with guacamole. Obviously, there's a big health issue going on right now, and we should be doing everything in our power to prevent people from getting sick and dying. But we're also creating a value discrepancy, and you're gonna have to pay for this in the long run, which is why you wanna understand what's going on. If you have the ability to work from home, like millions of Americans can, but you'd be paid more if you didn't work, well, that's a very strange problem to have. The average state is paying $463 a week in unemployment. Add to that the $600 per week the federal government is paying. That's $1,063 a week or $55,000 a year to be unemployed. While at the same time, you have millions of essential workers in America that have to go to work every single day to make a fraction of what people are making in unemployment. But that's not all. The government announced a student loan forgiveness program between now and the end of September. This is great news for those of you who have federal student loans because you have a once in a lifetime opportunity where every dollar you pay towards your student loans between now and the end of September goes directly to your student loan or principal balance without paying a penny in interest. So you have an opportunity to drastically pay down your student loans without paying a penny in interest. But it's unfortunate for the people that went out of their way to refinance out of their expensive federal student loans to a cheaper private student loan. That way they could do the financially smart thing and save money on interest. The government is handing out stimulus checks to everybody making under $99,000 thousand dollars a year. This is great news because you might get some extra cash to pay your bills, pay your rent, and maybe buy some extra guac. But if you worked really, really hard at your job and you just got promoted to make $99,500 a year, well, it looks like you just missed the cutoff. Sorry, Johnny. No check for you. Or what if you're an entrepreneur who started a small business and you hustled your way up from nothing to build this business that has employees and you never took out a loan before? 
but now because of all these things going on, you need a way to pay your employees. So you apply for this paycheck protection program that I talked about in the beginning of this video. That way you have a loan that's forgivable that you can use to pay your employees. But then you read for a lot of banks to get this loan, you need to one, have an existing relationship with a bank. And second, if you want to get top priority, you need to have an existing lending relationship with the bank. That means if you never took out a loan before, well, you get pushed to the back of the line. And then of course, the Paycheck Protection Program ran out of money, and then they were given more money, and then they had the whole issue of running out of money again, so the people that were in the back of the line essentially got screwed. This is what I call value discrepancy, because the government and the Fed have the power to distribute as much money as they want at their discretion instead of letting people actually earn it through the free market through their value creation. I don't blame them though, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd get everybody who has a nice beard a million dollars. Now, obviously, we're facing a crisis like we've never seen before, and emergency action had to be taken to make sure people have money to eat, and that all businesses didn't go bankrupt, and that less people will get sick because your health is the most important thing. But what this crisis made painfully clear is that you should not rely on the government to take care of you because, well, the government one sucks with their money and you don't want to have your fate relying on their hands or their discretion. I mean, one day the government could come out and say that, oh, you know what? We're not gonna give money to people with beards and we're gonna stop giving businesses money who make guacamole. I know, crazy example, but it's actually not that crazy because the government's kinda doing it right now by giving whatever amounts of free money they want to whoever they wanna give it to. Again, I get it. We're in an emergency situation and emergency emergency measures had to be taken, but we're gonna come out of this emergency, and if you don't come out of this emergency a little bit financially smarter, you are gonna be the one paying the price. Literally. I'll get to what this means on a bigger level, but for your personal level, that means you need to have savings, you need to have investments, and you should be working to create multiple streams of income, that way you're protected against anything, and you should be working to grow and build your own wealth, that way you can live life on your own terms without relying on the government, or social security, or a pension to live your life. I mean, social security is already bringing in less money than they pay out, and pensions around the country are going bust. You don't want to be on the losing side of the equation if the government says, okay, we're not going to pay for this anymore. Not to mention the fact that financial illiteracy is very profitable because when you are financially uneducated, then, well, businesses can sell you whatever they want, banks can make you risky loans, and the government can keep you relying on them. You don't need to be a millionaire to be financially smart. I mean, the simplest thing you can do is create a financial system for your money, like by following our 75 15 10 plan, which says that for every dollar you earn, 75 cents is the maximum you can spend, 15 cents is the minimum you should be investing, and 10 cents is the minimum you should be saving. It might not seem like a big deal, but if you follow a simple financial system like this, the 75, 15, 10 plan, where every dollar you earn goes through this funnel, you'll be surprised at how fast you can build a savings cushion and at how fast you will be able to build an investment stream that is paying you with passive income just because you're constantly investing in your investments. I don't want to get too deep into financial planning and investing in this video, but if you do want to learn more about financial education, well, we have a free ebook on money management and investing that you can read for free when you sign up for our financial education emails, which are also free. You can get our free ebook and our emails by clicking the link up here or by clicking the link in the description below. By the way, our financial education emails are different from our financial news emails. What I'm worried about is people and businesses getting hooked on this free money, thinking that it's actually free because, well, nothing in life is free. And whether you're getting these stimulus checks or not for you or your business, you are gonna be the one paying the price. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but money doesn't just magically appear out of thin air. Well, I guess in this case it sort of does. But this free money that comes out of thin air is actually really expensive. A healthy economy functions because people work hard to create value and then they get paid. And then when people get paid, they have money to go and buy things that they want, like cars, shoes, maybe some extra guac. Then when people spend more money on extra guac, these guacamole businesses have more money to invest in their business and hire more employees. And now more people have money that they can spend, and this creates a positive spiral that creates a growing economy. The government, on the other hand, is a little bit different because they're not a for-profit business. They don't sell goods in exchange for services. 
They get paid when you work hard at your job because the harder you work and the more you make, the more you get to pay in taxes. Your tax dollars then pay for politicians, it pays for government activities and services, and now it's going to be paying for these stimulus checks and bailouts. In 2020, the government is paying trillions and trillions of dollars to keep businesses and people afloat, which is great. Except the government doesn't have a few extra trillion dollars just laying around somewhere. However, even though the government doesn't have a few trillion dollars laying around, they do have a deal with the Federal Reserve Bank that says that if the government runs low on cash, they can just call up the Fed and the Fed will loan the government money. Sounds great, problem solved, except the Fed doesn't have a few trillion dollars laying around either. Now we're really in a pickle or a guacamole jar. The government spends a few trillion dollars on all these things, but they don't have these trillions of dollars. So they call up the Fed to loan them the trillion dollars, but the Fed doesn't have those trillions of dollars either. Now what? Well, the Fed has a deal with the United States Treasury Department that says these two people can work together to print an unlimited amount of what we call money or cash as they want. All right, now we're in business. The Fed and the Treasury Department go over to the printing machine, boop, 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 and turn how many trillions of dollars they want. Out of the machine come trillions of dollars. The Fed then picks up all their cash in their big arms, probably, and then they take this money and loan it over to the government. Now the government's happy because they got trillions of dollars in their pockets, and then they're going to start giving this money out to you through stimulus checks and bailouts for businesses and everything else in between. Now, everything looks good and everybody's happy because you're getting that free money, except that money isn't exactly free. If you go out on a shopping spree with your credit card and you go shopping at Gucci and then Lululemon and then you end your day off by going to Chipotle and then you ask for two extra sides of guac, people are going to think you're pretty cool. Whoa. Did he just get all that guac? He's so cool. But at the end of the month, you're gonna have to pay that guac bill. I mean, credit card bill. Sure, maybe you could defer this problem a little bit longer by paying off this credit card with your black credit card. And then at the end of the next month, you could pay off your black credit card with your platinum credit card. But eventually, you're gonna run out of credit cards and you're gonna have to start paying some money. It's the same with the government. When the government borrows money from the Fed, and they give it away for free to whoever they want, the government has to pay this money back to the Fed plus interest. Now, remember what I said earlier, the government isn't a for-profit entity. They get their money through taxpayers with tax dollars. That means you, from you working hard at your job. Normally, it's not that big of a deal because the economy is growing, and when the economy is going, businesses are growing, which means more people have jobs, and when more people have jobs, then more people are paying money and taxes to the government, so the government is getting more tax dollars. But right now, we are in a pickle in a guacamole jar because, well, the economy isn't growing, it's shrinking, and on top of that, our expenses aren't going down, they are skyrocketing. Smaller revenue, higher costs. Not a good combination. This puts a lot of pressure on the economy to grow faster because the government has all these costs they need to pay for. Plus, when people are desperate to make money quickly, they're more likely to make risky decisions. And so that could incentivize the government to push risky incentives. And if the economy doesn't grow fast enough, well, that means your taxes could go up, that way the government can make more money based off of whatever income that you're earning. But that's not all. When the Fed pumps out trillions of dollars, the supply of our dollars goes up, and basic economics will tell you that when you have a high supply of something, in this case our dollars, the value of that thing, our dollars, comes down. So when more money is printed, the buying power of each dollar you have drops a little bit. That's why $100 in 2020 isn't worth anywhere near as much as $100 in 1920 because more and more money keeps being printed and that's why the price of your rent, your groceries, and your extra guac keeps going up. The majority of people are out working hard to earn dollars and they're working hard to save dollars because that's what we're taught to do and we're told that that's the right thing to do except that is a plan for failure. Every time another dollar is printed, the value of your savings drops just a little bit, and the value of your earnings drop a little bit too. This is what inflation is, and it's called a hidden tax because the majority of people don't even see it happen because it's a gradual change, yet it's making the majority of people poorer each and every day. That's the bad news. The good news is you can come out of this on the winning side if you understand money because now you understand that you can convert your dollars into something like assets and investments that grow with inflation. That way when the price of things go up, you're okay because you own assets whose price went up too. 
This is what financial education is all about. And remember, if you want to learn more about that, we have our free ebook and emails in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, share it with one friend. That way we can help spread the word. If you want to learn more about a potential real estate bubble brewing, we already made a video on it. And you can watch this video on YouTube by clicking this button right over here. Thank you for watching. And as always, keep hustling.